Hello and welcome back to The Note. All this week the FT has been telling you about cash piles, the huge amounts of cash that companies around the world have, their on, have on their balance sheet, about predictions that that could soon turn into more capital expenditures. I'd like to try to put that into some context for you now. Now to start off with, it's certainly the case that CapEx has not been particularly impressive of late. Indeed, according to S&P Capital IQ, global CapEx, excluding financials, actually fell 1.5% last year. It's also true that it's an extremely popular prediction that CapEx is going to increase during 2014. These are numbers that were produced by uh, Deloitte, uh, surveying uh, economic and uh, equity forecasts around the world, and you can see that they're expecting sharp increases in uh, CapEx, particularly for the UK and the US, the uh, economies that appear to be in the, the best health in the developed world at the moment. But even in France, a, a country that has well-known problems and that is uh, in the Eurozone. Not only that, but investors want companies to do more CapEx. This is a chart from Merrill Lynch's regular survey of uh, international fund managers, and you can see that during the crisis, they were desperate for companies to clean up their balance sheets, and then for a few years after the crisis, they wanted companies just to disgorge their cash to them in the form of uh, dividends or buybacks. Now, uh, they are plainly pressuring companies to actually increase their spending to a greater extent than at any point since before the crisis. That makes it much easier for CFOs to do that. And indeed, if we take a look at this uh, graph also from Deloitte, of uh, CFO sentiment, this is for the UK, you can see that uh, CFOs are feeling much more confident, they have much more appetite for risk than at any point since the crisis, and indeed they say that they're going to be expanding expenditures over this year. True, this is just for the UK, which is an unusually strong economy just at the moment, but British companies tend to be internationally based, and indeed more than half of the uh, revenues of the operations of the companies covered in this survey come from outside the UK. So this is still of some use as a global proxy. Finally, if you take a look at uh, the trends, this is a chart from McKinsey, you can see that uh, certainly in the US it looks as though we are a long way below uh, a, the trend going back to 1980. By uh, McKinsey's estimate we could be as much as half a trillion dollars worth of capital expenditures below that long-term trend. If you see companies coming back to that level, obviously that could provide a very big stimulus to the market. So that's the case for greater capex. However, there are some reasons for concern with that picture. First of all, let's take a look uh, at that trend for greater investment uh, over a much longer time period. This is going back to just after the Second World War. Uh, using Federal Reserve data. Uh, and you can see that, in fact, CapEx seems to have ballooned during the two great bubbles, the dot-com bubble and the credit bubble, and that, if anything, it appears to be above its long-run trend at the moment. Those high expenditures of CapEx, the appearance that we're below the trend at the moment, could just be an artifact of excessive and unnecessary expenditures that were made during the uh, boom when either equity finance or credit was just too cheap for companies. Add to that, if you take a look at Germany, this is again on McKinsey's data, Germany is one big developed economy that hasn't had a housing bubble or any other big investment bubble in recent history. And as you can see, their capex appears to be bang in line with their recent trend. It may well be that our perceptions of capex have been distorted by bubbles. Add to this that generally companies only resort to uh, CapEx when they are at or close to capacity. According to Goldman Sachs, looking across US sectors outside of companies that uh, make oil field machinery, very few uh, sectors are anywhere close to their capacity at the moment. Uh, indeed, in the case of miners, thanks to uh, uh, the big problems they've had with reducing metals prices over the last couple of years, Many of them are under great pressure to reduce their capex significantly. That gives them more of a chance of making uh, positive cash flows. Finally, maybe we should look at capex in the context of sales. This is a fascinating chart that was produced by Andrew Lapthorne of Societe Generale uh, for the US, and it shows capital expenditures and sales going back about 20 years. Uh, and you can see that uh, while uh, capex has been unexciting over the last few years. It has actually grown more 
than sales for S&P 500 companies over the last couple of years. And that ratio of capex to sales is actually right near the top of its range. That implies, if anything, that companies may have been borrowing to uh, spend over the last while and that if you were to see any great increase in capex from here, it might be a dangerous sign of hubris. Often uh, increased capex is a late cycle move suggesting that CFOs have become overcautious, that they are extrapolating strong growth for years into the future. So yes, it's true that companies have a lot of cash at the moment and it's true that capex has been very unexciting for a while. It is not, however, quite as clear as it might first appear, either that we really are going to get a lot of capex, um, particularly if you include the mining sector, uh, or that that increased capex will be such a great idea uh, for companies, or even maybe even for the economy as a whole.